just got back from Transformers 2 by Michael Bay. I'm convinced that this movie is the earthly embodiment of hell and Michael Bay is the fucking devil. That's the only explanation I can come up with for what I've just... I don't even... I, I don't even want to say seen, because it wasn't like I just saw it with my eyes. I felt it with my entire being. I was violated by this movie. It was terrible. It was boring. It was everything wrong with movies today. I don't even want to... That's an understatement. It's not just everything wrong with movies today. It's everything wrong with, with this world and this reality and everyone in it. And every time that the theater around me erupted into laughter over some stupid canned joke that we've all seen a thousand times before, I crossed my fingers and just prayed for the death of my species. I haven't seen anything this bad since 84 when he was raped. I, I actually was trying to psych myself no matter how bad people told me this movie was going to be. I was like Optimus Prime. Hearing his voice, I haven't seen this stuff since I was a kid. I didn't even see Transformers. So I'm going to go in and see this movie. And then at the very opening parts of it, where the movie hasn't even begun, you yeah. start tinkering with it. And this, these side effects. And like, it's, like superimposed over like the DreamWorks intro yes. is like this transformer warble. Like the fishing line goes down in the water, but instead of making the fishing line noise, it's like... Yeah, I mean, this movie steals from everything. It steals from 2001, it steals from The Matrix, it steals from Lord of the Rings, it steals from Indiana Jones. It oh, I thought this was Last Crusade. They actually went to the same place in Jordan, you know, and it and, and was like, oh, man, you chose, oh, poorly. You know, nothing I noticed about this movie is it's always loud. Even if nothing is going on, this movie is loud. Like, if there's two people standing around talking, there's something going on. There's some kind of loud, obnoxious music playing. And there's two kinds of music in this movie. And, and it, it's either generic, like, semi-patriotic, action-y music that is totally unmemorable, and, you know, you're not gonna fun you're not gonna walk out of the theater humming any of these tunes. It doesn't have an iconic theme like Terminator or Jurassic Park or something like that. It's just... Or they have this shitty Dawson's Creek music that plays whenever it's supposed to be a family scene, and you're supposed to be like, oh, this is an emotional moment. It's one of the moments where the movie kind of simmers down and we get to take a look at the characters. And then you have terrible dialogue, and under the dialogue is this Dawson's Creek music. Like, you almost expect to hear that song, do 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 because it's that bad. And then there's the whole part of ripping off Smallville, and where Clark, he sings cymbals. He, and then there's music with Clark, it's the same, you know, Dawson's Creek Kike bullshit. I mean, it was so bad, TJ, in the movie theater, wrote down some notes. And he wrote down, this is like a retarded 12-year-old boy's uh, made a movie on a sugar binge. It was. It was nothing but loud noises and bright colors. Racial stereotypes, long legs of chicks, women are all, you know, oh, down. Every woman in that movie either is, like, gorgeous and objectified and has no personality outside of being a sex object, or she's like a nag. I felt like I was watching, like, some kind of 1940s movie. You know, I almost expected Shia a bitch to fucking smack the bitch on the ass and be like, Yeah, hey, go get me a sandwich and a cold beer, dame! And then, like, the, so, the, so much of the dialogue was cringeworthy, we actually wrote down... In the meat back. locker, now! They didn't say in, it just said meat locker, now! Tighten that <laughs> up, that sphincter! <laughs> he looks at him, like, real intense, like, Tighten up that sphincter, boy! It wasn't like, it wasn't even offensive to make a point. It was just offensive because it was actually that stupid. Like, you know this movie actually views black people as, like, ignorant, like, Oh, man, let's go get us a cheeseburger! I you can't read nothing! Why do I want to see John Turturro's ass? I'm sorry. If I was a five- or six-year-old kid, I would be scarred. I don't want to see that man's ass. Why? Yeah. They're in, you're watching the movie, and it's terrible, but at least you're not seeing a fucking John Turturro's ass, and then all of a sudden... Like, without warning, like, without any sort of preface, without any sort of indication that you're about to see his ass, all of a sudden his ass is on screen, and you're like, what? Ah, oh, why? 
it, it was as if you're watching some really bad sitcom, and then of course you know that there's going to be a laugh. And then, and even in the theater at times, there's no laugh. People are just kind of sitting there going like, when is this shit going to end? Why would the, uh, the, 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 the Decepticons are looking for this, this shard of the all-spark, why would the Autobots leave that Doesn't in the this custody remind you of, of the, the humans? Whole Lord of the Rings? Yeah, but why would they leave it in the custody of the humans when they know, like, they send like two little tiny Decepticons to steal this thing? They didn't even send any of the big Decepticons. They just sent like two little ones to go grab it real quick. Because the human humans can't stop them. Why would the Autobots give it to them? And the same thing with Megatron. They leave Megatron, their most powerful enemy, guarded by humans in weak-ass human ships when they know for a fact that humans cannot fight the Decepticons because our weapons are inferior. You know, spoiler. Who cares? You deserve to hear this, this, this discussion. There's, what, what's there to spoil? Oh, yeah, there's nothing. It's just, you just go to this most guarded place, security on Earth, by United States... And just walk up to the air duct and go right in. <laughs> That's it. It's an air duct. It's underground. We can get in. <laughs> so I, smart. I love all these movies. It's, it's, that's a fucking movie cliche. Every time there's some top secret place, you can always get into uh, a fucking air duct. Like no one thinks to guard the air duct. You know what the only good scene in that movie was, and it wasn't even intentionally good was when the helicopter was flying in Optimus Prime's dead body, dead body yeah. after Optimus Prime's oh-so-dramatic death. Oh, Optimus. We all care for Optimus. And it's like, <laughs> then you drop his body, and people in the whole theater started laughing. Yeah, they just dropped him like a turd. It's like, here's Optimus Prime. You think they're going to like lower him all like, you're turn drop, but instead it's like, boom, plump. You expect to hear a flushing noise afterwards, like Optimus no. Prime is dead. I, I, I mean, I couldn't stand how bad the science was in Star Trek. But then I, I forgive the film Star Trek. It's fun to go watch it. Yeah. It, it's actually enjoyable, and to see these little things, and dialogue, and little, just all kinds of stuff. It's nostalgic as well. Seeing Transformers, no. They're going to blow up the sun? What the <laughs> fuck? The Decepticons are going to blow up the sun. That will destroy the Earth. There is no way that won't destroy the Earth. They have this Decepticon that is sucking, like, cars and stuff into its mouth. Like, these two guys are hiding Are running. The They're running from it. Yeah. Well, cars are being moved, and dirt, and the dirt under them is being moved, and everything else, and... But they're running from it. Yeah, trucks, it's big stone cars, blocks, stones. You know, Egypt and everything, there are these... So many tons, and they're just going by, and these guys are, like, running. These two, like, hundred-pound humans are like, eh! John Turturro. And then they have this whole thing of this tomb of the, you know, it's supposed to protect everything, this tomb of the, what do you call it, the primes. Yeah. The tomb of the primes. So he's carrying around this this shard or something that resurrects any of these, anything from Megatron, you know, from uh, Cybertron. And so he could have just resurrected all the primes right there. Michael Bay is going like, nah, nah, we're going to save just one for Optimus. Who cares? They're dead. Oh, and, and another thing. I got something that's really stupid. They go to the pyramid. The, you know, the, the, oh yeah, yeah. And, and 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 all of a sudden, this this great sun, the sun destroyer, is the pyramid, and it's yeah. just buried under a. No, no, no. They just you block. They, they suck up the bricks of the they, pyramid, and right under you, not the few brought b b uh, blocks off, and it's oh, there's the machine and all this technology. It's like this big sun destroying but, machine just under the pyramid. Oh, wow. Remember when they find the primes too? They go in that the indie palace thing, yeah. and they're like, oh, it's the end of the line, and then like they destroy the wall. Like, who wouldn't have thought to do that? Wow, wow. Like, oh, it's behind the wall. Go figure. Here's the uh, thing. Remember Megan Fox's inability to either get dirty or well, to have her makeup movie, smeared? He's holding her at the end of the movie, and he's covered in blood and dirt, and everyone else is. She's completely clean. And everyone, he's holding her and everything. Everyone, everyone is covered in dirt. They're, Shia LaBeouf is covered in dirt. They're going through explosions, and everyone else is dirty and explosion except her. She's she pristine. Has, she got a little bit of time, uh, dirt on her clothes, but her skin is clean. All her her own makeup stick. is untouched. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm convinced you could just beat this bitch with a shovel to death and her corpse would be clean. You know, you could come back an hour later, it would still be warm to the touch. Right. This is the great thing we, we found out about Transformers. They're actually, they actually are, have a lot in common with some, some human beings on Earth called 
professional wrestlers. Yeah, because every time a Transformer hits another Transformer, or does like a, a headlock or something like that, or tears one apart, it's always like... Why are the Transformers retarded? Remember that one scene? And it was like, you could blink and miss this. They had like a female Transformer for like one second on screen. She comes and she's like, we gotta get you to Optimus. And then she's blown up like that. Like the one female Transformer like, we gotta get you Optimus. Boom, dead. Do you remember the Why? gratuitous scenes of Megan Fox's tits bouncing Oh, they were around? bouncing. They did it in slow motion. It's like, and, like, I wouldn't even bitch about that normally, but in this movie, like, especially in, like, a scene that they're trying to make dramatic, like, she's running to her dead boyfriend, I, and still it's like, We were loud. We didn't give a fuck. We didn't care. We were like, this is stupid. I was making loud noises throughout the movie. I was an obnoxious asshole, Okay. And, and, and so I get out of the movie theater, and people come up to me and like, Hey, were you the guy with the light and the cell phone? Yeah, that's a pretty cool phone, man. That was interesting. We were watching y'all the whole time. That was cool. Yeah. We were more interesting than the movie. <laughs> people were looking at us with our cell phone so that we had light right on this page, and they were more interested in that than they were with the fucking abomination that was going on on screen. People were actually more compelled by us than the movie. Like, people came to us after the movie and said, like, you guys were great, what kind of phone is that? That's awesome! There's this scene where they're talking about, you know, they go in and it basically rips off the beginning of Lord of the Rings, and they just rip it off. And back when the Primes battled, and the, and the Fallen One, and he was taken over, and we, they, we got to get rid of him. And it was like ripped off of the whole entire Lord of the Rings, the beginning, where they go over that scene. The Fallen and, even looked like Sauron. But, but yeah, anyway, and, he, and then this this fallen one, he's on the pyramid, and, he, and then all of a sudden he starts levitating stuff, and he starts doing this. He's like, rule the, the wizard transformer, and I'm like, okay, this is stupid. It was so long, it never ended, and it was it, you couldn't even tell what was going on half the time. Boom, 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 the Oracle told her that she would fall in love with the one and she's in love with him, therefore he must be the one, therefore he can't die. They ripped off that scene. And she's like, I love you so much. And then Shia LaBeouf goes to robot heaven. Robot heaven. Let me say that again for you. Just because I know that some of you are not even comprehending the stupidity of this A human this goes to robot heaven. A human goes to a heaven... For robots. Where are the religious groups protesting this? Shouldn't the Pope have issued a statement by now like, There is no robot heaven. Oh yeah, and then the Fallen who's built up the whole movie to be like this badass. Like Optimus Prime like kicks his ass in like two seconds. It's kind of like, oh, I am like, the Fallen. Oh, yeah. We fought for an hour to get up to this one battle and he just goes up there and beats his ass. And Megatron, Megatron, who's this, everyone knows, is like the, the baddest MFR of all time. Okay, he, he they resurrect him, and he goes up to Star Scream, and he's like, "Oh, I, I I did good in leading you," and he's like, "I'm the leader of a, a, even when I'm dead." And he beats him up, and then he goes to this guy, the Fallen, and he's like, "Master, master, yeah, what master, sense please, that make? I, I make." I, I do good for you. And then he's like trying to protect him and he can't even like Optimus is like, get out of here, Megatron. I don't have time to fight you right now. I have heroic things to do. It was so funny. The two scenes were right after each other. There was a scene of Megatron strangling stars and be like, I am the leader even in death. And then in the very next scene, he's bowing before the fall, like, Master, 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 Master. Master. Oh, Master. Oh, Master. I mean, this movie was so utterly racist and sexist. 
Oh, it even made fun of midgets. Like, remember that one? Oh, scene? and then yeah, they made fun of midgets at one point. Yeah. Remember the scene where Optimus Prime dies, and then for twenty minutes they give us like this just like pointless scene after pointless scene, and then all of a sudden they do this scene where like Shia LaBeouf is talking about like Optimus Prime's death. And it's like, that was 20 minutes ago, Yeah, no dude. one cared. No one gave a damn. It's like, everyone, I looked around in the theater and people were like, eh, eh, whatever. Now, like, the whole movie, like, did they, they mess up the editing? This was wor a worse, not even King Kong under Peter Jackson, who, who, who seems to have been wasted doing that movie and probably eating too many pizzas with George Lucas, did, could have done a worse film than this. Like, it was, I think the movie was actually shown out of sequence. I don't consider Michael Bay a filmmaker. I think that he is. I think he's just an abomination. I think he makes a product for idiots and to, you know, glut themselves on, and that's it. You know what? When I watched the cartoon years ago, and I've seen those, they were interesting. They were fun, even though it was based off of this damn toy. But the toy was even interesting. I had him when I was a kid. I had Optimus Prime. It was fun, and I thought about that voice with this actor and everything. However. It had a story. It had a plot. It was fun. Okay? This was the actual... This is like a two and a half hour bad commercial. That's what this was. And you know what the, the, you know what the worst part is? You know what the very biggest insult of the whole movie is? The special effects are not even that great. They're really not. They're, they're it, not. it looks like a cartoon half the time. When I was watching this film... I started thinking about Terminator 4, the latest one, what is Salvation or whatever. And I was thinking, you know, maybe I underappreciated that film. Maybe it won that bet. Maybe, maybe it's owned in this theater and we can walk out and go see it. <laughs> what if we walked out and, I don't, you know, maybe there's another movie. There's something in this theater. I mean, why do people get on YouTube and do things? Because movies like this suck and people don't want to go to movie theaters anymore and p dish out 10 or $20 and more gas money to go see a, a, a pile of, you know, if I want to see shit, I can go to the toilet. Uh, I don't have to go to the movie theater. Oh, here's another one. What about the Megan Fox and going to college? If you have Megan Fox as a girlfriend, okay? She's your girlfriend. She wants to be with you. And then you have Bumblebee, this Autobot car. Yeah. It's a Camaro. A Camaro slash giant robot. And you go to college and leave both of them behind. And you're like, no, no, I don't need you. I don't need the sex. I don't need the cool car. I don't need I don't sex. I don't need a cool car. I don't need a giant robot. All I need to do is go to college and learn some astronomy. Yeah, that sounds likely. Yeah, I'm going to do something. You know what? And when I go, I'm going to bring my mom. And, uh, and, I'm, and they're going to Oh, my God. Me. We didn't even talk about her. She was so awful. The mother was fucking terrible. <laughs> oh, she, she was awful. She was so annoying. Oh, Remember that scene? Oh, she was the worst oh, actress oh, ever. Oh, she my baby shoes. <laughs> I love my baby. He said, my little baby booties. Oh, look at him. Oh, look at him. He's just cool. Oh. oh, and then she ate the pot brownies. And, of course, she acted crazy afterwards. Yeah. Oh, I went to my son's college. I mean, what, what, what was this trying to What was with all the picture? weird humping jokes, too? There was, like, three or four scenes of things getting humped. They did, like, two dog humping scenes, and then there was a robot that was humping Megan Fox's leg. Like, what was Michael Bay? Michael Bay is like, well, let's have the dogs fuck. Let's have the robot fuck Megan Fox's leg. I mean, like, think about this. There was a guy who is paid to do special effects, who actually CG'd this robot humping Megan Fox's leg. That was probably a couple hundred thousand dollars down the drain for that particular effect of a robot humping Megan Fox's leg. Do you have any idea how many starving children we could have fed with that money? Yeah. You know what this is like? I think, you know like the story of Job? I think Michael Bay is Job and... Steven Spielberg is God and George Lucas is the devil and this movie was made on a bet. <laughs> I agree. This movie is terrible. Do not see it. Do not even look at it for a second. It will destroy your mind and rape your soul. I'm going to close this. Go ahead. Um, peace, the fiddle sticks out. Bye.